Harsh me to Kanya Kumari, India, the spellbinding mosaic of culture, tradition, languages, and an extraordinary mingling civilization. Keeping its age old culture maintained, today the country is taking huge strides on the path of development. Hello, I'm your host Lipakshi, and today in our episode of My India, we bring you some of the stories that will give a glimpse of a country's diversity. India's rich and glorious civilization is mirrored in its innumerable fairs and festivals. And in a weekly showcase of Indian culture this week, we take a look at the colorful festival of Paisakhi, celebrated across the country under different names to mark the beginning of the solar year. My India takes a look. The festival of Baisakhi holds a special place among various cultural and religious denominations that thrive in the all-encompassing nature of the Indian land. Baisakhi is a significant religious affair for the Sikhs and Hindus across the world. For Indian people in general, it marks the arrival of spring season that brings with it the promise of new life and hope. A large number of people gather and celebrate Baisakhi with a lot of enthusiasm and faith in the state of Punjab and all throughout the country. Baisakhi is a very good day. First of all, you all have Baisakhi to tell you about Baisakhi. आज यहाँ पे बहुत ही अच्छे तरीके से मेला लगा गया है यहाँ पे बहुत सारे मतलब लोग आए हैं मेला देखने अलग अलग कल्चरल से अलग अलग कास्ट से अलग अलग हर रीजन से आए हैं यहाँ पे बहुत ही अच्छे तरीके से मेला लगा गया है यहाँ पे हर चीज़ को बहुत अच्छे तरीके से प्रेजेंट किया जाता है मेला मतलब हमारे बैसाखी की शोभा बढ़ाता है आज के दिन मेला लगना ज़रूरी है मतलब मेले में बहुत कुछ है यहाँ पर देविका घाट का मेला सबसे बेस्ट होता है बैसाखी also known as Baisakhi, celebrates the start of the Punjabi New Year. Also, it was on this day that the 10th Guru of Sikhism, Sri Guru Gobind Singh, established the Khalsa Panth in year 1699 to defend Indian communities from the invaders. On this day, major religious activities are organized in Gurudwaras. Many also take bath in the holy pond to mark the auspicious occasion. For six, Baisakhi is a time to celebrate their unique identity, one that till day is a major facet of the Indian civilization kept alive in its traditions and festivities. This is a very important event for the Baisakhi Khalsa Sajana. The people who are living in the world are living in the world. The people who are living in the world are living in the world and the people who are living in the world are living in the world. इतने तीन दिन दिवाइस दिवांस जाए जाने हैं। पहले दिन अखंड परसाब रम हों दिया, दूसरे दिन दीवाना दिया रमता हों दिया, और बैसाखी वाले दिन अमरत बेले जिसे दिवांस आजदा, उसे बैसाख दे महीने दी कथा और खालसा साजना दिवस जो है परगट दिवस उदी कथा हों दिया इतिहास सुनाया जान्दा। It is believed that on this day. King Bhagirath prayed to Goddess Ganga and brought her down from heaven to earth. It is her who revitalizes the earth and is a perennial source of life for believers and non-believers alike. Hindus celebrate Baisakhi by offering their obeisance to Goddess Ganga, to whom they express their gratitude as they take a dip in the sacred waters of Ganga. Today Baisakhi is a new Baisakhi, Vikram Sambhat. का नया साल है आज बहुत खुशी होती है बहुत परमात्मा बहुत सबको सुख शांति देता है बहुत सुख शांति रहता है शरीर बिल्कुल लाल का बिल्कुल फ्रेश हो जाता है बंदा उत्साह बहुत खुशी होती है देखो आप कितनी भीड़ लग रही है कितने सारे हिंदू पर्व है ये बहुत बड़ा पर्व है हिंदू का बैसाखी बींग दार्वेस्ट सीजन The farmers who depend on crop yields for sustenance are in high spirits to enjoy the fruits of hard work. The men and women move towards their field to celebrate the harvest festival. As a tradition, men dress up in colorful lungi, kurta and turban while women folk clad themselves in salwar kameez or lehenga. They further adorn themselves with loads of jewelry and perform folk dances like gidda and bhangra to celebrate the arrival of spring. 
ਅੱਜ ਅਸੀਂ ਪੰਜਾਬੀ ਦਾ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਤਿਉਹਾਰ ਹੈ ਵਿਸਾਖੀ ਦਾ ਤਿਉਹਾਰ ਉਹ ਮਨਾ ਰਹੇ ਆ ਜਿਵੇਂ ਕਿ ਤੁਹਾਨੂੰ ਪਤਾ ਹੈ ਕਿ ਪੰਜਾਬੀ ਕਲਚਰ ਵਿੱਚ ਕਣਕ ਦੀ ਵਾੜੀ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਅੱਜ ਸ਼ੁਰੂਆਤ ਹੋ ਰਹੀ ਹੈ ਅੱਜ ਕਣਕ ਦੀ ਵਾੜੀ ਸ਼ੁਰੂਆਤ ਦੇ ਮੌਕੇ ਅਸੀਂ ਗਿੱਧਾ ਪਾ ਕੇ ਭੰਗੜਾ ਪਾ ਕੇ ਇਸ ਤਿਉਹਾਰ ਦਾ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਵਾ ਮਤਲਬ ਸਮਾਨ ਕੀਤਾ ਹੈ ਮਨਾਇਆ ਹੋਇਆ ਹੈ ਤਿਉਹਾਰ ਇਸ ਪੰਜਾਬੀ ਦਾ ਵਿਸਾਖੀ ਦਾ ਤਿਉਹਾਰ ਇਸ ਦਿਨ ਖਾਲਸਾ ਪੰਥ ਦੀ ਸਿਰਜਣਾ ਕੀਤੀ ਹੈ ਬੈਸਾਖੀ ਇਜ਼ ਅ ਫੈਸਟੀਵਲ ਦੈਟ ਬ੍ਰਿੰਗਸ ਪੀਪਲ ਟੁਗੇਦਰ ਇਟ ਸੈਲੀਬ੍ਰੇਟਸ ਯੂਨਿਟੀ ਐਂਡ ਹੋਪ This particularly holds true for the soldiers stationed at the borders. Despite being far away from their families, the festival gives them an occasion to celebrate their unity, the idols of service to motherland that continue to drive them and their faith in the almighty. Well, India has always been a land of great saints, assimilating in its fold various cultures and thoughts from time to time. It is a land where Sufism has not only flourished in its true spirit, but has also become a way of integrating different religious communities. A glimpse of it can be witnessed in different Sufi shrines of a country. So today we take you to the shrine of Shayyid Sher Ali Aga in Chhattisgarh that has remained a pious site for different religious communities for generations. Take a look. Situated in the Salim School Chowk area of Chhattisgarh's Raipur city, the shrine of Banjari Wale Baba has been serving as a synagogue of religious harmony for generations. This is the shrine of Sayyid Sher Ali Aga, a renowned Sufi saint. The shrine is visited by people of different religious communities who have faith in the Sufi saint. Here, every dharm, every jati ke log बाबा को मानते हैं और बाबा के चमत्कार को देखा है और बाबा का चमत्कार हर जाति हर धर्म के लोगों के ऊपर होता है इसलिए यहाँ पर लोग बड़ी आस्था के साथ आते हैं ये हिंदू मुस्लिम एकता का प्रतीक है यहाँ पर कोई भी ऐसी भावनाएं नहीं रहती कोई भी नहीं रहती हिंदू भी आता है उनको भी उतना सम्मान दिया जाता है मुसलमानों को भी उतना सम्मान दिया जाता है यहाँ पर सारे लोग मिलजुल के सारे काम को करते हैं people of different religious communities follow their own set of rituals for offering obeisances to the saint while hindus offer coconut to the saint muslims offer chadars at the shrine some people also tie threads or attach locks on the steel net for fulfillment of wishes kichdi which is a dish made of rice and lentils is served as a holy sacrament to all the devotees who visit the shrine yahan ka mahol mujhe muslim hindu sab bhai bhai jaisa laga aur hame koi prakar ki taklif to nahi ho raha hai humko sab ek hi barabar jaisa lag raha hai aur kisi bhi prakar ka jhanjhat to nahi dikh India has remained an epicenter of many such sites that strengthen the bond of secularism. People from all the faiths rising above their ethnicities, castes, creeds and religiosity gather at these places and spread the message of peace and brotherhood for coming generations to follow. And now a round up of some of the major stories that made news recently. Indians and tourists thronged iconic monuments including the famed monument of love the Taj Mahal to celebrate World Heritage Day despite heat wave like conditions. World Heritage Day is observed annually on April 18th with an aim to create awareness among the people for the conservation of cultural heritage across the world. Meanwhile, residents including children in southern Hyderabad city participated in heritage walk to observe the day and spread awareness about the historic monuments in the city. The first World Heritage Day was observed in 1983 after it was established in 1982 by the International Council of Monuments and Sites which later got accepted by United Nations General Assembly. The day is celebrated with a different theme every year and the theme for 2023 is Heritage Changes. Apple CEO Tim Cook opened company's first retail store in India in Mumbai underscoring the importance of its market. Some keen customers queued overnight to get their hands on Apple products even though they are available online in India. Cook was surprised by one man who turned up with a bulky 1984 Macintosh computer during the opening event. Apple had previously faced hurdles in opening physical retail stores in South Asian nations. 
but its products have been available on e-commerce websites while its online stores opened in 2020. The new store opens as Indian consumers increasingly look to upgrade their smartphones to glitzier models with richer feature sets from budget-friendly devices typically costing less than $120. As Apple pushes to make India a bigger manufacturing base, some of its products, including iPhones, are being assembled in the country by Taiwanese contract electronics manufacturers Foxconn and Winston Corp. The company also plans to assemble iPads and AirPods in India. India is not only the confluence of various cultures, but also the birthplace of Indic philosophies embodied in India's glorious civilization and rich traditions. The country under the leadership of Prime Minister Narendra Modi is emulating its significance in the field of cultural by allowing shared cultural development and not mere export of culture. With the intent to reinforce its prominence in the Buddhist world, India recently hosted the Global Buddhist Summit. Take a look. Sangam Saranam Gachami the International Buddhist Council, a global Buddhist umbrella body in collaboration with the Ministry of Culture and the Ministry of External Affairs, organized a two-day global summit in the capital city of India. The summit provided a forum for eminent Buddhist scholars and diplomats to delve into Buddha's teachings of peace, compassion and harmony with the objective of seeking resolutions for a world plagued with crisis. The event proved to be a remarkable feat in strengthening India's relationship with the global Buddhist community as various diplomats exchange dialogues with eminent monks of Buddhism. May the Global Buddhist Summit be a grand success and we as followers of the Buddha and responsible citizens of the world protect the nature, environment and the biodiversity on this planet Earth. Collective wisdom and united voice is the motto of IBC, International Buddhist Confederation. Let's join hands and pledge to act collectively to contribute our bit in making the world a peaceful place to live in with abundance of all good and positive things. The summit titled Responses to Contemporary Challenges from Philosophy to Praxis saw the participation of prominent scholars, diplomats, religious leaders and practitioners from across the world. The summit started with opening remarks of Venerable Dr. Dhamma Pia, the Secretary General of the International Buddhist Council, followed by a congratulatory speech by G. Kishan Reddy, the Minister of Culture and Tourism and later an enlightening address by the Prime Minister of India, Narendra Modi. The participants were left enthralled as Dr. Subhadra Desai sang Sanskrit composition, underscoring the three elements of Buddhism, the Buddha, the Dhamma and the Sangha. तो उसकी ऊर्जा कितनी असीम हो जाती है जब इतने सारे लोग विश्व के बेहतर भविष्य के लिए एक विचार के साथ काम करेंगे तो भविष्य निश्चित रूप से भव्य ही होगा और इसलिए मुझे विश्वास है पहली ग्लोबल बुद्धिस समिट इस दिशा में हम सभी देशों के प्रयासों के लिए एक प्रभावी मंच का निर्माण करेगी इस ग्लोबल बुद्धिस समिट में दुनिया के अलग अलग 30 देशों से मोर देन 30 कंट्रीज लगभग 170 इंटरनेशनल डेलीगेट्स हिस्सा ले रही हैं साथ ही विभिन्न देशों के एंबेसडर्स और डिप्लोमेट्स इस समिट में भाग ले रही हैं और इस दो दिवसीय ग्लोबल बुद्धिस समिट में पीस एनवायरनमेंट मोरालिटी 
हेल्थ सस्टेनेबल डेवलपमेंट और बुद्धिस्ट कॉन्फेडरेशन जैसे विषयों पर विस्तृत चर्चा होगी The Buddhist faith enjoys a wide pan-Asian presence and emphasizes peaceful coexistence in the world. India's effort to showcase her historical as well as present day association with the Buddhist faith will go a long way in India's rise in the global south and the holistic solutions the country can provide to the world. And now we bring you a few short stories about the recent developments and happenings from around the world in our section of World in Focus. Tens of thousands of visitors climbed aboard one of the world's oldest ships, still actively sailing at a Texas festival celebrating tall ships, traditional sailing vessels with tall masts and large sails. Built in Aberdeen, Scotland in 1877, the Elisa was one of the several ships docked for the Tall Ships Galveston Festival from April 13 through April 16 at a historic seaport in Galveston, Texas off the Gulf Coast. So you're going to see a lot of different ships, you're going to see different ages of ships, sizes of ships, styles of ships, but they all have something in common and that's sails. Uh, this entire festival is to celebrate sailing vessels. While Elisa named a National Historic Landmark in 1990, is kept at the Galveston Seaport as a museum ship year-around, several tall ships visited the event from afar like now Trinidad, a modern tall ship from Huelva, Spain and Ernestina Morrissey, a tall ship built in 1894 and normally docked in New Bedford, Massachusetts. Attendees paid to board and tour docked ships as well as join scheduled sailing trips into Galveston Bay. Mark Sibinico, port captain of Galveston Historical Foundation said the historic design of tall ships resonate with people. Nepal's holy Bhaktapur city witnessed a sea of devotees who gathered to celebrate the Lunar New Year by participating in processions and dancing. Celebrated by the Newar community, the city saw devotees smeared in orange color vermilion carrying idols of deities in 32 palanquins around the Balkumari temple in the ancient city. Yo. थीमी को ये ऐतिहासिक बत्तीस खट को यात्रा अत्यंत महत्वपूर्ण था नए वर्ष शुरू होने बेला में ये तो ही शुरू होने यो इसको धेरे पौराणिक मौत और उपनिषद और ऐसा ये क्षेत्र में तो ही बत्तीस वर्ष खट को यात्रा होने कर था आज दुई हजार अच्छी साल बैसा को दुई घंटे बयान बत्तीस खट को यात्रा होने कर था ये � Devotees were seen playing with vermilion and dancing to the tunes of drums and cymbals in the temple premises. The celebrations at the temple are held on the second day of the new year and it marks the arrival of a new season. India has always been an agro-based country. With a strong agriculture sector, the country has become self-sufficient for its food security needs. The sector currently employs 56.4% of India's population and is on track for exponential growth. Take a look. This year, the budgetary allocations of over 15 billion USD for 2023 to 2024 to the agriculture and allied sector included 9,000 crores allocated specifically for farmer education. The agriculture sector, which currently employs 56.4% of India's population, is on track for exponential growth in the country's eight agriculture clusters, Uttar Pradesh, West Bengal, Madhya Pradesh, Karnataka, Maharashtra, Punjab, Rajasthan, and Assam. Budgetary allocations were made for schemes such as the Digital Public Infrastructure for Agriculture, 
the Atmanirbar Clean Plant Program, the digitalization of 63,000 agricultural credit societies, and the development of modern storage facilities in India. Digital public infrastructure for agriculture will be built as an open source, open standard, and interoperable public good. This will enable inclusive farmer-centric solutions an agriculture accelerator fund will be set up to encourage agri startups by young entrepreneurs in rural areas. The fund will aim at bringing innovative and affordable solutions for challenges faced by farmers. We will launch an Atmanirbar clean plant program to boost availability of disease free quality planting material for high-value horticultural crops. Outside the halls of parliament, India's private sector has also increased their support for the development of the agricultural industry in India. In September of 2021, the Union Ministry of Agriculture and Farmers' Welfare signed five MOUs with Cisco, NinjaCart, Geo Platforms Limited, ITC Limited, and NCDEX eMarkets Limited. These MOUs will have five pilot projects to help farmers maximize crop yield to establish India's agricultural might on a global level. India's conducive environment for startups has also reached the fields and farms of India. No longer remaining limited to business hubs, Agricultural startups are being established all over India by the capable youth of our country. The potential is almost more than uh, 50,000 crores of business in this particular sector. Today, the industry is only about 1,000 crores. So, it's a huge potential in the industry. Many people can come in in the industry. The more people that come in, the more the knowledge the farmers will have. So it will be better for the industry to have some competition and some good in, uh, young companies coming in to promote this technology further. India is no longer a land of uneducated farmers. The revolution of the agricultural sector has resulted in several well-established and educated young entrepreneurs turning to farmlands, initiating more than 1,300 agri startups. Several modernizations have resulted in the introduction of artificial intelligence and machine learning into the agricultural sector, and the establishment of government and private platforms for supporting and creating a conducive ecosystem for the sale of agricultural produce. Agricultural-based startups have the aim to ensure that scientific and cutting-edge technology reaches and utilizes the entire capable soil of India east to west, north to south. While women have long been integral to the agricultural industry in India, female entrepreneurs have entered the rapidly revolutionizing market, providing it with a rather different approach and a different perspective. Rapid modernization, targeted investments, government support, and the entrance of talented youth into India's agricultural sector will have a compounding effect and will ensure a bright future for yet another facet of brand India. Well, that's all we have for you this week. Your comments and suggestions are important to us. Do give us your feedback at myindia at anin.com. I'm your host, Lipakshi, and it's goodbye from the entire production team.